friends, welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. Ooh. We're back from vacaciones. Yes, we are. And the stupid fucking sun hasn't been out. And I'm upset about it because I'm yeah. going to lose my tan. I know. And I'm just a better me when I'm tan. I know. I just, honestly, I look better. I do. I do. I look better. And when you look good, you feel good. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's that's the color I'm supposed to be. <laughs> like, and that's that's how that's how I was like the same shade. Um I know, I think I when I lived in Hawaii too. I'm the color that you are naturally. Because yeah. when Adam did my makeup yesterday, he goes, You're the same color as Drew. And he yeah. goes, or was. <laughs> yeah, my my pale is yeah. Dason's tan. But that's Dason's just naturally. She's got less melanin in her skin than I do. But I am very very dark. I don't know if you can see that. Are you guys getting this? Are you guys getting this? <laughs> Get a load of this. <laughs> and then you just have one tit out. Yeah. I'm just topless. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're back from vacation. And we'll get into more of our vacation stories when we get closer to telling yours. Yeah. But we have some zoomies we want to get out. We were just talking about the new season of um, Queer Eye. Yes, love. It's so cute. Absolutely. I don't love. think I'll never not love that show. Same. Um, who's your who's your bias? Mine's mm. JVN. Yeah, I'm gonna say JVN too. Yeah. I love all But of, I love them all. I honestly love them all equally. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I think that they all are so important to the team. Well, because in the original Queer Eye, they never had a Karamo. Yeah. That I was a role that. they created um for obviously the the reboot of it, but Karamo probably makes me cry the most. I know. He really gets in there. Which, uh, if I were to ever be on some sort of team like that, I would be the Karamo. For yeah. sure. I would be I would be the brain. I'm working on the brain. Who would you be? I don't know. <laughs> the camera guy. <laughs> <laughs> the vibes. <laughs> JVN's assistant. That would be me. <laughs> um, it was so good. And then we were also talking about... Um, I think you should leave the new season. Dude, the amount of people that tag me in that makes me so proud. If I could do promo for anything, it's for that show. It's so funny. It's so I funny. downloaded a few episodes to watch on the plane. Of the newest season. Yeah, yeah. season three. Yeah. yeah. All the episodes are like, what, 20 minutes, if that. If that, yeah. And there's like probably like three or four skits in each one. Dude. They're so I funny. watched the one, the one where he's like, you're my enemy. And then he's like throwing the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the empty cup and then that guy's like you threw actual water and now you're in trouble that's the difference i was pretending and you did it for real <laughs> they just make no sense and i love that i love when they're so yeah. nonsensical like what i was telling Dason about the driving crooners don't skin. spoil that one for them that one's really funny well or should we and they go watch it no you guys should definitely watch it i, I won't tell you the whole thing because it's it's a long thing to explain yeah but I was laughing so hard, like, and I just kept telling Jason right now, I'm like, I'm going to kill you driving crooner. <laughs> <laughs> and we were also laughing at the one that's like the bachelorette. And yeah. she's like, I just feel like you're here for the zip line. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, dude. There's another one with a guy. I want to say he's like his supervisor, like the main guy, Tim Robinson, someone, this guy's supervisor. And the guy tells him like, Hey, what the heck? You don't follow me on Instagram. Cause he passed around his phone for everyone to order like DoorDash or something. Yeah. So he follows He's like, don't worry. I followed myself back on your phone. Can you imagine someone doing that? And he's like, yeah, I can actually, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> and then it goes into this whole thing where he wants to be like kind of an influencer, the weird guy. Okay. And the then, supervisor? No, the guy that was like, oh, I, okay. on, that was using Tim's phone. Yeah. Okay. He's like, I I want to be an influencer. And then he yeah. films these skits and they're really funny. So you should watch that. I'm going to keep watching it yeah. today. But I watched the whole first episode. Yeah. Like when he's doing the political commentary show. And, and, he he, goes, and if I start to lose, I go on my phone. And he goes, just hold on one sec. <laughs> he's just looking at this. <laughs> he's always pl He's like, my phone's about to die. It's at 99%. <laughs> Dude, it's such a funny show. It's really good. I think you should leave season three. three. Yeah, I mean, two is also really funny. And even one, I feel like I just watched one so long ago that I don't remember it, but I remember laughing really hard at it. Yeah, but it's just so funny. And then I always think like 
how they come up with the ideas makes it 10 times funnier. Like, what if we did the bachelorette, but this guy's there, but he's only there for the zip line. <laughs> That's so funny. It's so funny. He was like, 55 workers, 55 prizes. Yeah, that one's really, the pay it forward one. Pay it forward. Yeah. They're just absurd. Like, mm. the, the premise of them is so silly. And, like, that's what makes it so funny. Did you watch the one where he goes on, like, a game show with his kid? And then yeah, they, yeah. he wins the next round to go in the VR thing, but he forgets how to breathe. Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> breathe. He's breathe. And he's like, ah, when he comes up. <laughs> Dude, so funny. I oh, my dying. God. Unbelievable. Highly recommend. And the new season of Queer Eye, also Highly incredible. Recommend. Highly recommend. We, um, we also saw The Little Mermaid recently. We did. It was really cute. It was very cute. It was very long. Yeah. Shockingly. But I don't know if the live action ones, I, I assume they tend to be longer. That's the only live action Disney movie I've ever watched. You've never seen Beauty and the Beast? No. Or the Cinderella? No. I've never seen Cinderella. Or Mulan. They said there was no songs in Mulan, so I'm sorry. I was like, I don't want to watch it. I know that Mulan was the actual retelling of Mulan. Oh, not like, the it was cartoon? The, it was an accurate oh, okay. retelling of Mulan. Uh, the cartoon is like a sensationalized Oh, so in the, in the live action, they don't have like Mushu or the little no. cricket? Okay. Mm-mm. So I've never seen, well, we watched Aladdin, the live I've action Aladdin. That. Oh, I watched it with uh, Billy. No, I watched it with Donnie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Me and Donnie watched that together. Not the biggest fan of that one. I didn't love it, but it was good, but I didn't love it. Um, but the little mermaid was very cute. It was really cute. Yeah. Hallie is so incredibly talented and so pretty, like just drop dead gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Like she's, so she's so beautiful and like literally a Disney princess in real life, mm-hmm. but she's so talented. Like the way she can sing, dude, if I could sing like that, I'd be an unchecked power <laughs> in this world. I also, lo- I thought Melissa McCarthy was really good too. Oh right? yeah. She was she great. Was really funny. She was honestly really great. Mm-hmm. I even um, liked the little animals. They were so funny. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Um, it was good. It was good. We also, I don't remember the last time I went to a movie and there were a bunch of little kids there. Yeah, we did. We did go when there was a ton of kids. Yeah. So like, but some of them were so funny. Yeah, like, like there's, you know, the part where she's exploring in the ship. Was that in the cartoon where the shark comes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, the shark comes and she's like swimming away. It's, it's very accurate. So anyone who's a hidden racist, who's like, that movie sucked. It's literally almost identical the to the cartoon. The only thing that was missing, which in my opinion it needed was the chef song because it was so funny. <laughs> That's true. But everything else, like a lot of it is is the exact. There's like only a couple of things that are different. But yeah, yeah, it's not much that's different. No, but when the shark comes through the boat, yeah. this little kid was like, watch out! <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah. There was another kid that Billy said, like there's a part where she, you know, when like Ursula takes her and they fall over the edge and they fall into the water. Yeah. Um, This kid was like, like you just like couldn't believe it was happening (laughs) which is really funny so it was really good i really liked it i enjoyed it i the only thing i wish i wish they had more songs i wish she sang more yeah did you think i needed more of her vocals a lot of people didn't like the prince eric song but i was actually kind of impressed with how he sang (laughs) i was like oh i mean yeah he was kind of impressed but i get why people didn't like it yeah i get why (laughs) Hey, I stop that. You know what I, they should have put replace, instead of that song? The French guy. La Poisson, La Poisson. <laughs> <laughs> with all the copper pots. It would have been so funny. If they replaced his song with 10 more of Hallie's, I would have been like, yes. I did not like the Scuttlebutt song. That one kind of made me mad. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> you guys know how I feel about Lin-Manuel Miranda. You guys know how I feel about him. I respect the talent. Um, I do think he uses it for evil sometimes <laughs> in that, but I will say as talented as he is, and I've said this on the show before, I think that he, him requiring them to put him in anything he makes anything for, I think is camp. So he, he wasn't, wasn't in, in the little mermaid, yeah, he was. but I just mean anything else he's penned anything. He has been in it to some capacity. Was he in, did he do the music for Encanto? I don't think he did, huh? I don't remember. He might have. He might. Oh, okay. Well, he might have had a hand. I don't know. Okay. Um. But like in the Heights. Yeah. Hamilton. Well, he, he wrote the musical in the Heights. Yeah. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. But he was also in it. Is my point. Uh huh. <laughs> so my point, like, same with Hamilton. He was Hamilton. He was yeah. the main character. So like, I think that's camp. If I had the 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 
chops, if I had the talent that he does, I would do the same thing. All of the Tony Awards I bet you last can, night. I did. I saw that. And I sent you every video that came on my For You page about it. I did. I saw the Tonys. Um, I saw that Alex Newell, I don't know how to say their last name. They were unique in Glee. Yes. They won an Oscar. They I the saw. First non-binary, or Oscar, sorry, a Tony. Well, I'm manifesting an yeah, Oscar. <laughs> but they were the first non-binary person to mm-hmm. win a Tony, which is fucking incredible. It's so cool. The Tonys are so fun. Mm-hmm. They're so fun. I've been watching them in clips on my TikTok. Too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the little mermaid, very good. I loved it. Yeah. Beautiful. I and it it's, cute. and it looks beautiful. Like the way it's shot is beautiful. Mm-hmm. So highly recommend the movie. I was surprised. None of the daughters, at least one of them wasn't Polynesian. Yeah. I don't know. Missed how, opportunity. I don't know. They live in the ocean and they don't have at least one in there. That doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. Especially since it was so free range. Like mm-hmm. all the daughters look very different, which is fucking cool. They could have very easily put one in there. I'm wide open. Why didn't they ask me? <laughs> it was made three years ago. <laughs> it was made so long ago. I wasn't. I, it was literally nobody when it came when they were filming. I can't believe they didn't think of. Can't me. believe it. Unbelievable. It's right. I'm going to be in Moana. Yeah. Manifest, manifest, manifest. We don't know yet. So stop. Or don't keep telling Disney. Don't tell me. Tell <laughs> Disney. <laughs> okay. Are you ready to get into our vacation stories? Yes. Uh, so we went on vacation with our whole family. It was really, really fun. We did. And we were really sad we had to come back. I was. We had so much fun. I, it was so much fun. Going back home to Hawaii is always wonderful. And someone told me that the connection that we feel to the land and everything when we go there is uh, like a theory or it's a study called epigenetics. Mm-hmm. Which is like basically, it's almost like reincarnation, but you just essentially feel most at home where your ancestors are from or belong. And a lot of indigenous people were actually vibing with what I said. Yeah, they were affirming that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Saying that you all felt the exact same thing that I talked about feeling whenever I'm on island. So, but it was wonderful. It was amazing. One billion out of 10 trip. (laughs) But some of, I'm trying to think of the funniest things that happened. I mean, Well, I got stung by jellyfish. Yeah, we both did. Yeah, so did you. And our mom. I got stung first. Yeah. Um, It, like, latched onto my finger, and then it, like, laid on my hand and my wrist. And I pulled... It it was like a pinch. I was like, ah. And I pulled it out, and it was hanging from my hand, so then I just launched it. Um... (laughs) Really far because I have did such you, a. There were blue bubbles that we kept getting stung. Blue by. bubbles. Yeah. Was it? Did you see the blue part of it, or just it was like just the tentacle, right? Yeah. No, I saw the blue part of it, like kind of hanging off a little yeah. bit, like like it was. Oh, hanging I like bet that. it was the same one. Because it was still in the. It was in that same part of the ocean. That's true. That we kept getting stung by. My throat didn't hurt it apparently because it came back with a vengeance. It came back pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people ask me if I peed on it or someone peed on it. No, I think that's a myth. In fact, I've heard it's a myth. I've heard it doesn't. Yeah. Um, My dad, who's been stung by 2 billion jellyfish, has told me that it's mainly just the acid and pee is what's kind of in aloe vera. It's like something that it just takes away the sting or the pain. So I told him, I just don't know the aftercare for this. Like, do I just leave it? Do I have to like take something? He was like, if it doesn't hurt or you're fine with the pain, like you're fine. Yeah. It'll go away. So I have like a tiny little scar now right here from it. I don't have anything on my arm, though. I think my arm is clear. But I have like the tiniest one on my hand. Yeah, there's nothing on my arm. I think because it was the worst right here. Yeah, that's yeah. how I was on my, mine was on my leg. It stung me from behind. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, ow. And I turned around and saw it. And then I like put my hand in it and like pushed it away. Yeah. And then it stung my hand and I was pissed. But it yeah. mostly hurt my leg. Yeah. And then it, I was yelling at her, get out of the water. <laughs> And some people are going to be like, why'd you keep swimming? Um, I was hoping it was a one-off. Because Drew got stung on the first day and I got stung on the last day. Yeah, that's true. So that's why me and my mom, we got stung on the same day. That didn't stop me from seeing them. I just swam in a different part. I said, hey, I don't want any problems. All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break with our friends at Julie. So I personally have never had to utilize Plan B or any sort of form of it, but I have had some friends that have had to use it and have had a lot of experiences with the morning after pill. And for them, I know that they experienced a little bit of shame. Maybe they were embarrassed. 
And I know that they're not alone in that journey. So if you've ever had unprotected sex, forgot your birth control, had a condom broke, or you're just not sure, we're super excited to talk about a new company that's giving emergency contraception a much needed rebrand. So Julie is an FDA approved morning after pill that helps stop pregnancy before it starts. Julie is aiming to be the emergency contraception company for the next generation, one of learning and acceptance, not stigma and shame. Julie stops your body from releasing an egg using the same active ingredient as Plan B or other morning after pills. Essentially, Julie works by preventing or delaying your ovulation. With no egg, there's no fertilization and therefore no pregnancy, and it's no risk to future fertility. It works best when it's taken right away or within 72 hours of unprotected sex. Julie is just launched at CVS, but you can also find Julie at Target and Walmart stores across the U.S. You can also order online to have for the future just in case. It's legal in all 50 states. You do not need an ID, prescription, or credit card to get it. You can go to juliecare.co to learn more or find Julie at your nearest CVS, Target, or Walmart today. That's juliecare.co to learn more. Now back to the episode. Yeah, I mean, it just didn't, it it hurt. It didn't hurt nearly as bad as I feared it would. So. No, Drew said it felt like getting a tattoo and it did. Yeah, that's what it felt like. Um, and it just stung. It The worst part of it was right after it happened mm-hmm. and it stung a lot and then it just slowly faded and then it was fine. So I was fine. Someone, Everyone was like, what'd you do? And I'm like, I kept swimming. <laughs> that's what I did. I just chose to keep to keep swimming. We didn't get to do any hiking. Gosh dang it! I kept asking every day. God, I love to. Are love, we going on a hike? I love to willingly work out outdoors. On vacation too. Nope. And nothing no one, I love more. I was the only one that wanted to go. <sighs> Everybody else was too lazy. Not. Not. We went to the swap meet twice. That was really fun. I fucking love the swap meet. I know. I don't have my, my bracelets on today. I took it off to take my makeup off. What makeup? Off your wrist? No, off my face. I just didn't want like water dripping on them. Even though I shower with them on. I don't know. I don't. I just didn't want them on. I was going to say. For a second. Yeah. Yours never make noise. I feel like mine feel like I have a bell, like a big cow bell around my wrist. No, you're just used to me making noise. Oh. I've had them on for seven years. No, I know. Six years. Yeah. You're just used to me jingling. You're not used to jingling. Mm-hmm. That's why. Mine You'll, just feels so much louder. Alex told me, she was like, how do you do the jingling? And I'm like, I just don't hear it anymore. <laughs> it's just, my my ears have like gotten used to it, <laughs> to the noise. <laughs> she was like, okay, because she got one. Yeah. She's like, I don't want to get too many because of the jingling. And I was like, I like the jingling. So I don't care if I hear it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um. I love the swap meet. Ooh, I love the fucking swap meet. Specifically the Aloha Stadium IAS slash Pearl City swap meet in Hawaii. That one rocks. It was really fun. I love to get my t-shirts from there. I buy my t-shirts from there. Um, my favorite big tees, like my UH tees, all my, all my faves. I love to get them from the swap meet. I bought these cute, like like tank tops from there and i put yeah. one on one of them was screen printed stretched it across my boobs ripped the screen print <laughs> so now it's just a tank top yeah it's i'm gonna peel it off yeah <laughs> now it's just a plain tank but i was thinking what if, if i didn't do that how would it have survived in the washer it wouldn't have <laughs> that's the beauty of the swami <laughs> i love to go especially to the aloha stadium one and then i love to get cut up mango in a yeah. bag yeah and walk around in the blazing hot, humid heat. No wind. No wind. Just heat. Just heat. Just sweat. And I'm eating my mango and I'm looking for a deal. That's my <laughs> that's my idea of a I'll Saturday. know it when I see it. Yeah. Looking for a deal. I even told the guy, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna buy five of these shirts and a sweater. And he's like, oh, okay, well, they're this much a, a, a shirt. And I'm like, well, if I'm buying five of them, you can give them to me for less. And he's like, mm, but you're never gonna, you're not gonna find these on the other ones. I'm like, I saw three t-shirt stands on my way to this one. And then he gave me ten dollars off. So I, I was like, sold. I'm only, I'm too embarrassed to do stuff like that. <laughs> so I'll just pay full price. <laughs> I only do it if they're nice. No, I know. If I feel like the price is the price and they're like hard set on it, then I'll just pay what whatever mm-hmm. you require. But you never know if you don't ask. And honestly, he made a profit off me for sure. <laughs> However much they cost to make, he sold them for way over that. Yeah. So, but I, that's where I always, you guys always ask me where I get my bracelets. That's where I get them from the Aloha Stadium swap meet in Hawaii. 
Um, the ones I used to have, I took them off. They're copper now because believe it or not, these are not real gold. And we're selling them now. <laughs> I'm going to list them on Kylie's closet. <laughs> It's going to be my six-year-old bracelets. Fake gold bracelets. Fake gold bracelets that are now copper. Yeah. They're not even rose gold. They're copper. We're looking for at least $300 a bracelet. I'm looking for $300. Yeah, per. Yeah. Per. Not including state tax. (laughs) We're shipping and handling. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So I replaced them and I got the new set. Broke a few of them already. I was just gonna say only two of them have pearls on them. Yeah, my pearls have all gone already. Oh, my jade thing is gone. <gasps> that sucks. I got one with fake jade on it. It's gone. <laughs> Girl, Dang, I tried to buy a jade bracelet. I go, how much is this? She tried to tell me two hundred dollars. Love you. No, for the swap meet, you're crazy. Uh. Uh-uh. What did I say? Funny thing that happened. Can you think of any funny stories besides us getting stung? Billy wearing matching outfits with those teenage boys. You guys saw it in my dump. He did it twice, both times at the swap meet. I yeah. think that's what men wear to the swap meet. In Hoi. Yeah. Gray, gray tank. The beautiful thing about that is, is Billy told me himself, because we saw them at the swap meet. And he was like, those kids are dressed like me. Because <laughs> you can tell they're like in high school. <laughs> and we're obviously not in high school. So then I was Speak like, for yourself. I was like, that's so funny. And then we saw them two more times. We kept running into each other at the swap meet. And I said, dude, you should take a pic with them. And he was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Cause I just thought it would be funny. And then we go to the Malasada truck in Pearl city. And then they were there too. And then when they came out of their car, I was like, dude, you have to take a picture. And he said he would be upset with me if I asked them. So I didn't. <laughs> you asked them, can, can we take a picture with you guys? Instead of the other way around. They don't know who the fuck I am. That's another beautiful thing about Hawaii is like many of you met me and saw me and took pics with me and you were all very, very sweet, very nice. But for the most part, no one gives a shit about me there, mm-hmm. which is really nice. That's nice. Refreshing. Yeah. Yeah, that's refreshing. Or if they realize who I am, they're like, oh, that's right. Okay. Like that's just like as far as it goes. Yeah. Um, which is just like I think that's just like small town mindset but it's really nice feels good we went to our favorite beach and we saw turtles again and the we only did, time we saw one when in the no water was when we were with um bremen <laughs> no i saw some earlier not when we were in the water that's true we, we saw, saw them, them on the beach. When, yeah when we were on the beach yeah yeah and i told you guys billy always sees turtles when we go to that beach yeah ancestors visiting no more get him away from me i told adam i put both my feet and kick him away from me <laughs> she didn't do that no i was just scared of animals in the water yeah and they were big yeah. like those turtles were big but obviously and we all know this you can't touch any you can't touch animals. them yeah you can't touch them the it's jelly cough. the jellyfish touched me i didn't touch <laughs> it. i didn't consent to that jellyfish touching me yeah but the turtles and like any other sea life the are, fish or whatever, yeah. they're protected, first of all. So it's a fine if you get caught doing it or anything like that. But also it's kapu um, to touch them, to uh, mess with them in any way. Don't do that. So, but we, it's nice to see them. We saw them. They came right up to us um, in the water one time. Billy saw, I think like two or three. But I told y'all that um, Billy's grandparents always visit us in the form of turtles every time we go to that beach literally every year i've taken him that's happened at least two so that's how you know that's our ancestors that's not me being silly that's me being i just wish they would do it from afar i'm scared of them (laughs) they came to say hi i think that's a good thing like if an otter came to me i would be so excited otters are really unpredictable animals climbed up on my back i would be so excited but not a turtle turtles are so scary (laughs) They're good. They're I respect ancestors. you and I appreciate you, but I'm scared of you. That scene in Moana where her grandma comes back in the form of a stingray, that's for realsies. Mm-hmm. That's us. Like, literally. I don't know. I learned this in school when I was little. And they said, like, when you first walk into the ocean, you should shuffle your feet on the sand. Yeah, because yeah, stingrays I will come up. I don't know if that's true, though. It is because I saw someone saying, I worried about that way more than I probably should have as a kid. And then someone stitched it and she said, it's true. Because one time I, she's all, because I didn't know that. And I got some because they have barbed wire, like a I know thing. It in goes there. inside you. It's a barbed wire. They have a barb on their stinger. Yeah, yeah. 
it goes inside you when they sting you. Yeah. It's crazy. Like uh, like bees do too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why our cousin Cruz said she got stung by a stingray. No Were you way. There? No. Yeah. She said, I got stung by a stingray and I didn't know that the barb goes inside you. Yeah. And she goes, and they told me well after, so like, like a day after. And I was like, oh, okay, well, nothing I can do about it now. So then she said she started feeling really sick, like for a couple of days. Mm. And then she said she got better. And then she's like, so I don't know if it's still in there or what, but. And she got stung where? I don't know where she said she got stung oh. by a stingray. Or I think like, it was in Mexico or something. Oh, but. okay. Oh, that's so scary. I forget. But she said. New fear unlocked. She said that's how she found out that they have the barb things, but she never pulled in hell. She just was. A- <laughs> that's what she's like. Well, I'm not sick anymore. So I don't know if it's still in there. Oh that's my gosh. <laughs> Okay, we're going to get into some of your funny vacation stories Yes, um, with all your family. So this first one's from, it might be Andrea or Andrea, I never know. Mm-hmm. Um, she said, my cousin made me eat actual algae on our beach vacation by telling me it was the same that they used for sushi. Of course it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you something. Your cousin tells you to eat something, you say no. Immediately. Every I don't time. care what it is, I'm not eating Every it. Every time, especially an older cousin. You always say no. As someone who tries to get Donovan to eat things all the time, I speak from experience. And he is not my cousin. Yeah. He is my brother. Dude, I talked about this on my Instagram story. We went to Salt and Straw and they have like edible like perfumes there. Mm. And so I asked Donovan if you could pick one, which one would you want like to eat? Yeah. And he was like, oh, the chocolate one, obviously, because <laughs> he's a chocolate freak. Yeah. But I wanted they had them as testers. And I was like, because I think you could spray them on ice cream. And so, so weird. Yeah. So I told him, dude, only one has a sprayer and it was like citrus or something. I'm like, please let me spray it in your mouth. And he was like, no. I'm like, please. He went, okay. And he opened his mouth one squirt and he was all. Wah, wah, wah. And she laughed and laughed. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. It was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> that place is pretty good. I love salt and yeah. straw. Ugh, they're so good. Okay. That's crazy that you ate algae from the ocean. That's crazy. Is it algae or seaweed? I don't know. I feel like algae sticks to stuff. Yeah, algae's like... They're standing, They're outside a cruise ship and she scrapes it off. <laughs> she's just picking up a rock and munching on the side <laughs> of it. Yeah, she's just scraping it. She's just putting her teeth and peeling it off the yeah, side. Yeah, scraping it off. No, thank you. I feel like even when I was little and swim and see, we would touch anything that touches my feet in the ocean. I want to scream at the top of my lungs. I'm scared. I don't like it, but it doesn't like bother me. I don't like it at all. When I lived in Hawaii for a long time, I think I got over that. Yeah. Um, Cause you can't control it in a lot of places. Yeah. Cause there's actual animals and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I think it doesn't bother me. Like I, I don't prefer it, but it doesn't bother me. I will say though, any kind of water, aquatic, like plants or anything like that. In smaller bodies of water, like a lake, that Gross. disgusts me. That disgusts me because fuck a lake, fuck a river. Mm-hmm. Like, no. An ocean is different. A lake and a river, yuck. Yeah, when I would float the river in Eugene, I always, I'm like, I just wish it would, like wasn't moving. Like, I want to get out and just swim in the water. Like, in the ocean, like, it's moving, but it's back and forth. Yeah. The river is racing me down. Like, yeah. I don't have time to react. So I would only be able to get out on my floaty for, like, a good few feet and then i'd see ducks swimming by which at the time i thought was really cute but then i think of how much they poop in the water and i'm just swimming in it yeah i mean and i think it's gross i think i think rivers and lakes are just not my culture yeah my my people don't don't congregate around rivers or lakes that makes sense because i was only with white people so, yeah. yeah and they love the yeah. lake yeah what are Ooh, they, man what are they, river heads river rats river rats <laughs> river rats <laughs> Y'all are a bunch of river rats. <laughs> Not derogatory. <laughs> what the heck? That's gross. That's <laughs> that's that's their culture. No, I know. And then the first time I floated the river, I was like, my friend told me she was wearing water shoes. I'm all lame. Mm-hmm. And I tied my rainbows to my my raft. I got stuck on a bunch of rocks and it, my feet were broken by the time I got off them. Turns out you... Had the egg was on your face. I know. And I was too poor to buy river shoes. So I would wear tennis shoes. I didn't care that I ruined. That was me when I jumped off a cliff. And it didn't matter. I jumped. I did went cliff jumping in Hawaii. Um, like off, I jumped off spitting caves for those of you that know or don't know. And I didn't have water shoes, but they said that you need them to get out. Cause you have to, you have to swim to the side and climb out really fast. Mm-hmm. 
And they're like, you need shoes. Otherwise, your feet are going to get fucked up or you're not going to get up fast enough and you're going to get sucked into that cave and drown. So then I was like, OK, uh, naturally, I'll wear a low top Converse, which I did do. Nice. And then um, I think that you would have thought I tied cinder blocks to my feet because <laughs> it was so hard to swim in them. Yeah. Because they filled with water immediately. And it was like I had two sandbags on my feet. <laughs> And so then I, I actually got cut up alive, a couple scars on my legs because I was climbing so fucking fast because my shoes were weighing me down. So it like took me longer to swim to the side. Don't recommend. <laughs> Don't recommend Converse as a water shoe. <laughs> <laughs> in case you guys were thinking about it. In case you guys were wondering. Okay, this next one's from Abby. She said, when I was in grade eight, so I was 13, about to be 14, mm -hmm. my family went to Disney World. We were eating at the Garden Grill in Epcot and they had Chip and Dale walking around the restaurant for meet and greets. One of the chipmunks, do you know how to tell the difference between um, Chip and Dale? I don't. One of them, I don't know which one it is, but one of them, their nose is red. That's how you tell the difference. I thought both of their noses were red. No, the other one is brown. So one has or a black. Red. It's black. Okay. But I don't care what the <laughs> other one's color is. <laughs> one has a red nose. Red nose. You don't even know. I guess I do. It's black. It's not. It's brown. They don't have brown noses, bro. Mm -hmm. Okay. You didn't even know that one of them has a red nose. Why would I believe you? N you knew that? Yeah, Drew. I do know that he has a red nose. Where'd you know that from? Because I watched the movie Chip and Dale on Disney Plus. The new one? Yeah. Well, there you go. And it was really funny. And I've been trying to get the hype around it, but it's not picking up steam. Rescue I don't Rangers. Know yeah. Yep. It was really funny. They were investigators. It was funny. I know. All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break with our friends at Fast Growing Trees. So you need to breathe some life into your own backyard with FastGrowingTrees.com this spring. From shade to fresh fruit to privacy and natural beauty, let FastGrowingTrees.com help you plant your dream garden with their expert advice and fast, reliable shipping. FastGrowingTrees.com's plant experts curate thousands of easy-to-grow plant, shrub, and tree varieties for your unique climate. Meyer lemons to evergreens and everything in between. No more waiting in long lines and hauling heavy plants around with FastGrowingTrees.com. You order online and your plants arrive at your door in just a few days. I personally really loved FastGrowingTrees.com because I found the perennial shrubs, I think is what they're called. And they also have magnolia shrubs, which I think are really pretty. I was looking for a great price. I found one and you will too. And with Fast Growing Trees, a 30-day alive and thrive guarantee, you know everything will look great fresh out of the box. Join over 1.5 million happy Fast Growing Trees customers. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash two idiot girls now to get 15% off your entire order. Get 15% off at fastgrowingtrees.com slash two idiot girls. Now back to the episode. Okay. One of the chipmunks, can't remember which one, came around to our table and my parents insisted my brother and I get a photo taken with them. The chipmunk held out his arm to say, like, let's link arms for the photo. But I didn't understand. So I just petted his arm and I was like, wow, super soft. <laughs> After a minute or two of me petting their arm, they just linked arms with me before the photo was taken. I was mortified and I felt so bad for the person in the costume who I was caressing. If it makes you feel any better, they probably have that happen all the time. Yeah. And also you were still a child. So it's like, you know what I mean? It'd be different if you were an adult and did that. That'd be funny. Yeah. It's still a funny story. Um, when me and Billy would eat at the cafe at Disneyland, uh, they have Chip and Dale walk around in there too. Mm -hmm. Almost exclusively. I've only ever seen the two of them. I think I've seen like the few times I've eaten at that restaurant. I think I've seen one other character one time, mm -hmm. but Chip and Dale frequent there. This I don't is know. the buffet. The story yeah. of the cafe. The story of cafe. Okay. Yeah. I almost exclusively see Chip and Dale. Like I never see any other. They're like, this is our turf and no yeah. one better come <laughs> yeah, over. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if they're just the most popular. So you've seen them, but you didn't notice that one of them has a red nose. Well, that's what I'm getting at is like, I try my best to not look at them because I, I, I fear the interaction. For those of you that don't know this about me, this is a fun fact about me. His nose is black. You're right. Told you. This is a fun fact about me. <laughs> okay. I have always been afraid of uh, characters in costume and more specifically ones that are giant. Like if they're like huge, like really tall. And when I was a kid, like obviously when I'm a baby, um, everything's big to me. Like mm -hmm. everything's large, everything's tall. So my mom would have like birthday parties at Chuck E. Cheese. And like as soon as they played that song where that fucking rat comes out. <laughs> I that would, river rat. That river rat. 
I would literally like scream and cry and run in the opposite direction. Like I just knew, like I was Pavlov to know when that fucking, when Chucky was going to come out, mm-hmm. Charles E. Cheese. Entertainment Cheese. <laughs> Charles Do Entertainment Cheese. you imagine being that much of a star that your parents give you the nickname, the middle name, sorry, Entertainment? I don't know. I got to stop to ask his rat mom and dad. <laughs> his river rat mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> and so when Billy first started dating me, I think I had mentioned that fear to him. Wait, so that's a character. Like they're in a costume, like a mascot, right? Yeah. She would do that even with Santa Claus, who's not in a that's true. He's not in an like a costume of sorts. That's true. Well, no, he is in costume. But you could see his face. Like he doesn't he's not like cartoony. Doesn't or, matter. It's just he's about not the, even, it's, it's the it's the campiness, it's the He's lore. not even like that much bigger. He's just That's a, true. He's human size. Yeah. Still didn't like it. I think I just associated. I'm like, they're all the same. If they're sitting in a chair and I have to take a picture, they're all characters. Mm-hmm. Anyways. So I tell Billy. I had mentioned that fear to him at one point or another. It's my fear of big things. That's what it is. Like, I know there's a name for it. I forget. Mm-hmm. But it's like the way that avatars are so big, like that terrifies yeah. me. That terrifies me. Um, like literally it makes me, it makes me want to throw up. Like that's how bad it, I don't know where that fear comes from. Don't tell me if you do. Uh, so I told Billy and then fast forward, we're dating for like a year at this point, or maybe it's in the first year that we're dating. We go to Disneyland. Um, there we go in that Tomorrowland. It used to be Tomorrowland, but now it's like, it's just like Star Wars themed, I think. I think it's still Tomorrowland. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we go in there mm-hmm. and then they have like a little meet meet and greet thing with Chewbacca. And my mom was like, we have to go. We have to take a pic. And I'm I'm like, no. And my mom's like, come on. Like, we have to. We have to. So I like go in there with the thought that I'll just like hang off to the side. I'm like, it's probably not that bad. That's what I'm telling myself. He's like, Chewbacca's the scariest one. Like, no. Groot is the scariest one. Oh my god, you're right. And I've seen Groot once, and it literally like Chewbacca. Like the, when you see him at Disneyland, he's probably like like seven feet seven tall. feet tall, yeah. maybe like seven f- two. Yeah, right. Groot is at least ten feet tall. It's not ten feet. Yes, it is. He's probably like eight or nine. No way, dude. He's way taller than that. He has to duck when he comes out of the little building. I know. I've seen it, and I don't like it. It literally makes like. It makes like my butthole go inside my body. Like I, I saw Groot one time from afar and I told him like, we have to leave. Like we have to leave. Like I literally, I, I was eating my, I wasn't hungry anymore. Mm-hmm. I literally stood up and left. It's just such a fear of mine. Mm-hmm. I don't, and it's fucking silly. I know that it's stupid, but I am just like, I just can't do it, man. So when I see Chip and Dale, I don't look at them because I don't like them because no, no personal beef. I just don't like costumes. Like they just Do you feel like that they would, don't scare me nearly as much though? No. Like because I feel like they're cartoons and like I'm an adult, so I shouldn't yeah, be afraid. You're gonna be 30, so <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I shouldn't be afraid. So I don't I try not to look at them. That doesn't stop them from interacting with you. No. Even when you have no kids at the table, they will still come up and talk to you or like motion to you. And they go like this. <laughs> I hate that. I hate it. It's really bad. They do it every time. Just though. No, they all do it. Like, like I heard Pluto do it once. Yeah, that's and goofy. Yeah. And I remember one time we were eating there and they, Chip and Dale came up to us three times. They probably people who knew you. Well, and then Billy goes, I'm tired of that. <laughs> he kept, what did he call it? A squirrel. squirrel. He said, I'm so sick of those squirrel brothers coming <laughs> over here. <laughs> I was like, they're not squirrels. And he goes, then who are they? <laughs> and I go, they're chipmunks. And then he goes, and okay. Their names are Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. And I said, their names are Chip and Dale. And then he goes, you're making that up. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not. Why would I make that up? That makes no. How would I have come up with those names so quickly? And he was like, you make things up all the time. I'm Dale's, like, no, I fucking don't. I looked at it. Dale's the one with the red nose and his teeth are separated, which is kind of fucked. I feel oh, like, like he has a, like a gap? Yeah. And okay. then the other one, what did I say? That was Dale. So then Chip's teeth are together and his nose is black. Oh, I feel like they didn't have to fuck up Dale's teeth. Like you could just change the color of his nose. They're like, nose isn't enough. Got to separate the teeth. (laughs) Got to give him buck teeth. Yeah. Only way people will know. Well, now I'll never forget that. But he, and then we were staying in that hotel 
So when we went in the room, I'm like, look, like that's lit. Cause he was saying, those are not Disney characters. And I'm like, yes, they are. What would they be? And then he goes, in what movie have they been in? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. And I was like, I know they were in Rescue Rangers. Yeah. Like that's a reboot. I was like, they used to have a show like back in the like day. Like a cartoon, yeah. He goes, yeah, okay. And then we go in the room and there's in the bathroom in the that hotel, there's Chip and Dale posters behind the toilet. And I go, look, this is literally fucking them. Like they're like climbing up a tree or something. Yeah. And he goes, those are fucking squirrels. And I was like, no, they aren't. But he goes like, I'm so sick of those squirrel brothers coming over here. <laughs> Jesus. They came up. I'm not kidding. Like every 20 minutes. They probably like, knew you. They came up and they were like, and then they're going. And then you have to sit there with no kids. Like it's weird when you don't have kids. And you sit there and you're like, "Wow. Nice to meet you." And you're like, <laughs> "Okay." And then you start trying to eat again and they're still standing there. It's weird. So you don't look at them. That's why I'm like, I just like I just go like <laughs> you, you, when they come you just go like this. Sometimes I think I'm like, "No, no, no. No, yeah. no." I'm like, "We don't have any children with us so i'm sure they won't stop by us that's not true they still do do you feel the same when they show like the princesses or is it just the big character costumes no it's just it's just the big tall ones it's not even character costumes now because like i'll see goofy and that doesn't scare me you know which one i think is weird is the old man from up i haven't seen that one i've seen it and it's so oh and it's a costume yeah yeah and it's so little yeah yeah <laughs> see like jack skellington no yeah no 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 if i ever saw him i'm um, running in the other direction yeah i feel yeah. that him groot chewbacca they're all my ops for real Groot is way scarier though chewbacca's fucking scary too like and i know they're not real but that's not the point <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter i'm scared they're not real but yet here they are all right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break with our friends at Manscaped. So everyone listen up. Father's Day is around the corner. And if you haven't gotten a gift for your dear old dad yet, you're in luck. Manscaped has your back and your dad's balls and also my balls if you really think about it. Trust us, your dad will be thanking you for keeping his balls in check. Also my balls. Don't forget about that. So don't wait any longer. Use the code 2 idiot girls at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. Your dad will thank you for the most memorable Father's Day gift ever. I love the idea of a company that encourages men to take care of themselves, like self-care in a sense where they're like, it's not embarrassing to want to shave your balls. If you want to shave your balls, you shave your balls. And you can do it with the ball trimmer, which I personally have used on my balls and I give it a 10 out of 10 highly recommend from dear old Dason with her balls. So Manscaped is the only men's brand dedicated to below the waist grooming and just launched their lawnmower 4.0. Imagine surprising your dad with a sleek, well-designed and optimized body hair trimmer that says your balls will thank you on the box. They also put a t-shirt in mine and I wear it to sleep every night. So I never forget that my balls are thanking me for utilizing the lawnmower 4.0. They also have amazing products like cologne, crop mop ball wipes, okay, crop reviver ball toner, I give my dad mine because I don't need I don't need that, and crop preserver ball deodorant. For anyone else listening, you'll appreciate this part. Manscaped products are cruelty-free, paraben-free, dye-free, and vegan. You get 20% off and free shipping with the code 2 idiot girls at manscaped.com. Get your dad a gift you know they will use. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code 2 idiot girls. Don't forget that you came from your dad's balls. This year, show your original home some love with Manscaped. Now back to the episode. Okay, this next one's from Maddie. She said, my family went to Florida when I was about 11. It was my first long vacation away from home. I brought framed photos to put up of my dogs and my latest crush from school. And I put them around the hotel room. My family still makes fun of me for this. <laughs> Why are you going to war? Why'd you bring mementos? <laughs> that's all that's in your suitcase. It's just a little framed photos. That's so funny. You forgot a bunch of shit because you brought all your memories. <laughs> yeah, she's like, well, home. I stayed up all night putting these together. Of course I didn't pack. Who do you think packed the frames? <laughs> me. <laughs> and what were you doing? Exactly. Sorry, I want to remember people on yeah. vacation. Sorry that I'm sentimental and you're not. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out only one of us has a heart. That's funny. <laughs> that's crazy, but that's funny. You bring a framed photo of Squid on vacation. <laughs> Sometimes I just look. When I was in Hawaii, I literally was looking at pictures of him because I missed him so much. Ugh, shut up. But my uncle, um, 
who was babysitting him, he was sending me daily updates on him yeah. and lots of pics and videos, which I always love so much because uh, they make me feel good to see my son thriving <laughs> and having a blast. He's a freak. It's funny because he has our no- uncle, not squid. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> it's funny because squid has no concept of time or understanding of longing or missing yeah he's all like my mom's dog like she knows like she's been counting the days like she just knows when my mom's gone squid knows when we're gone but it doesn't hinder his ability to be a nuisance or have fun yeah no he's still gonna he's still gonna live it up even when we're not there (laughs) but when we come back he is like the sweetest boy ever because he's so excited that we're home Mm mm-hmm um, but yeah, I, I, every time we leave squid, especially for a long period of time, I like cry when I put him away. <laughs> <laughs> well, first I let him sleep with us. We always let him sleep with us the night before we leave. And then the morning of, we always like give him lots of kisses and put him away. And we, cry. I cry. I said we, but I'm the it's only one. No, who cries. it's just you. Just yeah. me. <laughs> I just love him so much. Okay. This next one's from Inez. Ines, I think. She said, I was in Punta Cana with my girlfriend and a girl approached us and said, oh my gosh, it's so nice to see a mother and daughter having fun on vacation. Mind you, I'm only a year older than her. She never told us who she thought was the mother. Why didn't you ask? Really kick off the vacation with a fight. Are you guys just kiss in front of her? <laughs> Me too. When you guys kiss on the lips. That's so fucking annoying. Yeah. People are weird. I would never, people I don't know say that. To, I would never say that to someone I don't know. Just like, you know, when, um, you know, when women are like, men are so fucking creepy and weird, like, and then men say some head ass shit, like, well, what are we just supposed to not approach anyone? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> don't. Like, how is that lost in trans? Don't, don't come up to me. I don't want you to. And I mean, like, as, like, a normal person. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, obviously, if you're a fan of mine, you can come up to me personally. Yeah. But, like, I just mean in that instance, like, what did she gain out of going and doing that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and people are like, well, sometimes you, if you want to compliment people, you should. I'm like, yes, on things that are tangible and real. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if they have a dress that you like or a ring or maybe they're wearing some cool sunglasses or shoes... Like things that have nothing to do with the physical, I think is more than okay to comment on. I like your shoes. Like that's, that's fine. That's safe. But to say like, what a sweet mother and daughter duo. You have no idea who those people are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just feel like it's such a ballsy like risk to just comment on people's familial relationships, looks, pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes people assume shit like that. You got to be like no fear kind of person to do something like that. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's an assumption. So I don't it know. It is. It's I presumptuous. Mean, yeah, make the assumption to yourself. I don't need to share yeah, it with other yeah. people. Well, and also like, it, y- there are just many ways you can pay people a compliment without assuming something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or just being like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just like. On the, I guess I'm just so like how I think is like words are so impactful mm-hmm. and I'm so acutely aware of, of that fact mm-hmm. that God forbid I say something off like that. Yeah. That would make me run into the ocean and never come back out like mm-hmm. running face first in and never come. Like if you corrected me and I was wrong, I'll never recover from stuff like that. <laughs> It's too much on me. I know. I agree. It's like way too much for me. I'm like too, I'm too like embarrassed about shit like that easily. Mm hmm. I don't get embarrassed often, but when I do, it's bad. Like, I had a really good reason (laughs) to be embarrassed. (laughs) Oh, it's like something similar, but not really. Like, sometimes, and this is like, remember I told y'all two times, one time, or it's a coincidence, two times it's a pattern, right? Mm -hmm. I have had women in the past, it's always women, and it's always white women, and they think that me and Billy are siblings, right? Which, even when we're alone, like we're on a romantic date and you think we're brother and sister. <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind? Yeah. But I think part of that is like a longing and a hope that he's single. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it is. Yeah. But sometimes like in this, uh, mind you, this only happens when I go to dinner with his family, never with my own family who he arguably looks more like, right? Mm-hmm. Like, cause we're all someone, his family's not obviously mm-hmm. like his nuclear family. 
um, we'll go to dinner and they, this is obviously before I had a platform. So now people like know who I am and they know who he is, mm-hmm. but like they would assume that we were all children of that family, including me. And I'm like, Jared looks like every white dude ever. And Billy looks like <laughs> he came straight from the Polynesian cultural center. And I'm like somewhat in the middle, I guess. And you thought that these two people birthed all three of us? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Billy's parents, like, I'm telling you, like, there's no fucking way. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just think don't comment on people's families. That's my it's point. Yeah. That's my point. But just that, like, I don't know how you get there mentally by looking at at this mishmash group of people and thinking, like, well, they have to all be kids of these two. Well, maybe they thought you were all adopted or something. No, like, they've been like, oh, your parents, like, to me. And I'm like, these are not my parents. <laughs> like, I don't even look like them. Like, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, if you took if you took skin color and, and darkness of features out, I, like, I facial feature-wise, I don't look like them. I'm also taller than both of them. That yeah. makes no sense. I mean, so are Billy and Jared. But, like, that's like, it makes no fucking sense. Makes no sense, bro. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. People Anyways, are- don't do that is my point. And that's honestly funny. And I wish you asked who she thought was the mom. Guess. Start a fight. Guess. And if you pick me, I will cause a scene. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this next one's from Monica. She said, 11-year-old me was trying super hard to impress the lifeguard uh, in the lazy river. And my floaty flipped over thanks to my cousin who did it on purpose. When I stood up, my bathing suit bottom was half was that half of my butt full moon shining. Needless to say, I swam away as fast as I could. Do you think, do you think they saw or were you just embarrassed? Both probably. Both probably. Yeah. I think they saw it and now I'm really embarrassed. That's what <laughs> I'm thinking. I try to think if I've ever lost a bathing suit. I don't think I have. Yeah. We've told this story. You lost your top at my, the boy girl party. Oh, I was thinking like at a water park or like, oh yeah. And that was because someone pulled it off me, which is different. Mm. I meant like accidentally losing it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, or like having like a nip slip or something. Yeah. I had these target bathing suit bottoms on, um, for one of the days in Hawaii. And I was like, I can't wear these anymore. Cause they're ones that are like adjustable. Like the waistband is meaning like I could pull it and have a full thong or pull it and have full butts. So I was like, I felt like it kept moving off my butt crack. So I was on the bottom. So I was like, everyone's looking at the bottom of my butt and it's awful. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to wear them again. Um, I don't think I've ever had an accident like that. Mm-mm. Like an accidental one. Not that I can think of. No. And we used to go to water parks as a kid a lot. I feel like it was because our mom was like no string bikinis. I think that's where I have the most accidents with. Cause that's true. Like it was like full butt, like, uh, target suit. They're like underwear. Yeah. yeah. Target bathing suit bottoms. And then the top is like almost like a sports bra. Like, yeah, you know? it clips. It like hooks. It yeah. doesn't tie. Nothing's coming out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That is true. I think that's why. It's like, well, we talked and we talked about this with our cousin Cruz because the way Cruz is like really teeny, teeny, tiny. Mm-hmm. Like she's super tiny. Um, and we're not, obviously. Um, as you guys all made sure to comment on that video about the waistline. <laughs> Oh yeah, should we address that? <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, about that. you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna rant about that for just a second before I finish my fucking story. Um, we posted that promo about like the width of the circumference of your neck being like your waistline, or whatever, and we're laughing and making jokes about it. And Jason put it on TikTok, obviously. And I already wrote this in the comments, and you'll see it if you go and look at it. But like, I was like, why are so many women being so fucking rude in this comment section? Like some, some women in there were being really disrespectful towards us for literally no fucking reason. Like, I don't know why you're so mad that your shitty little trick doesn't work for me, but what's wrong with that? That's what I'm like. Is it a crime for, and let me tell you something. If you're like, well, I'm a bigger girl and it works for me. Congratulations. I'm not one of them. Hey, I'm not one of them. In fact, some of you are like, I want you to film yourselves doing it. No. no but just to give you some satisfaction. I don't work for you. I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> but just to give you some satisfaction. Yeah, speaking of which, this episode will not be an hour and a half. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I tried to do that with my pants yesterday. It didn't fit around my neck, but they fit my waist. How does that work? 
There you go. Do I double it, carry the three, and minus the one? <laughs> and then that's another thing. People are like, well, of course it doesn't work because that's double your waistline. Okay. So let me say, let's say I go into I go into a thrift store and I find a pair of Levi's and I put them on my neck. And I I, I put them and I'm like, well, that's double my waist size. And then you know what I do? Fold them and put them back because they don't fucking fit me. That's my whole point. Yeah. What does that information do for me? Knowing that, what does it do? If I sewed these two pairs of pants together, that would be big <laughs> enough to fit me. You see what I'm saying? I feel like they were saying that because I was saying like, in terms of being like, there's no way my neck is the same. Like, obviously it's not, but they're saying, so you're telling me two of my necks <laughs> makes my waist. Not only like- that, but I love a 22 inch necklace. One of my necklaces is 22 inches. You're telling me my waist is 44 inches. Yeah. It's not. Hello. And that's not my fault. That's my point. That's it's not well, 22 our- meaning that hangs. Well, I'm just saying. Even then, your waist isn't 22 inches. No, it's not. That's my point. I don't understand it. That's why I was like, 22 inches, no fucking way. That's why I said, who am I, Jessica Rabbit? That's why I made that joke. Because it's like an unreasonable proportion. But the point in me bringing this up is that the real problem should be with the fact that measurements are so fucked Mm -hmm. for anyone who's not like who doesn't wear masculine presenting clothing, right? So if you shop exclusively in women's- Even then for them, it's still very hard. Like pants in general are just like almost impossible. But even for them, pants are a lot easier to like measure because of the way they do it. Like Billy will go into any store and he'll know his one number and it will fit him. That's the difference. Like for women's bodies, like they're so different. Mm. They, you're not accounting for hips, thighs or butt, right? And so all of that plays a factor. And your tummy. That too. No, you're not thinking of bellies. So that too. My point being the sizing, especially for any, anyone who shops in a women or female section, right. Mm -hmm. For anybody, the, the sizing is so fucked up. It really is. Like if you measure yourself with a tape measure, you're actually bigger than what you are in pants and stuff, Mm -hmm. which is so fucked. That's so annoying. Why do they do that? Just label it one. And then I'll know if I can shop there or not. But anyways, also, for all the women who are being rude, why? Who cares? It's not that serious. If you if your silly little hack works for you, congrats. It doesn't work for me. I I feel like I don't know if it was lost in translation, but when I was saying laughing about it how it doesn't work for me, mm-hmm. I don't think I said in there if this works for you, you're an idiot. I don't know, but a bunch that. of them called us idiots <laughs> and I I'll take an IQ test with you right now, bitch, and I'll prove to you who's an idiot. Not me. Not me. No, I told you that one lady wrote, tell me you don't know how to do math without telling me you you don't know how to do math. And her bio said, I like to lift up crowns, not knock them off. Nice. So I wrote on there, I said, it's so ironic, Debbie, that you wrote this on here because of what your bio says. You're like, you like to uplift people or whatever. And what math? What are you talking about? (laughs) If I put that bitch right here and it says it's a 12 and I put it right here, what math is there to be done? Okay, whatever this is, times two. Be fucking serious. You guys piss me off. And that's why, you know, what's funny is all the women who are being so fucking annoying and hateful in that comment section for no reason. None of them were fans of me, of mine, yeah. of ours, yeah. like of yours. None of them were fans. One of them was, she's like, it works for me. And people were arguing with her. And I said, I'm glad it works for you. It doesn't for us. And she put, I couldn't agree more. And I was thinking, then why did you write this? Then, <laughs> congratulations. Like, what do you want a yeah. prize? Just sometimes I wish. That people would would watch stuff and laugh and then move on with their life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, it's like, it's so stupid. <laughs> like, it's so dumb. That is a stupid thing to get mad about. I agree. Yeah. Like, there are so many other outrageous things online right now mm-hmm. that you could easily put all of your energy into and be like, this upsets me. Mm-hmm. But you guys chose a silly hack that doesn't work. And I'll stand by that. It doesn't work. Hey, it doesn't work. Doesn't work. It doesn't work for us. And for a lot of other people, according yeah. to that comment section, there were a lot of people saying, I think I'm just being gaslit in this comment section. <laughs> I saw I read a comment like that. That's so funny. Cause it's true. If and it works for you, guess congrats. Not even congrats. I don't care. It doesn't work <laughs> for me. How about, how does that help me if it works for you? I don't care if it helps you because it doesn't help me. So it's pointless. like, what's I'm trying to think of something that help, that works for me that I know doesn't work for everyone else. I'll tell you something. Um, I like to eat Cheetos with hot carrot or hot Cheetos with carrots. I enjoy that. That works for me. Mm -hmm. Am I out here attacking all of you who don't eat it like that? Of course not. No. Because my silly little shit doesn't affect you. Mm -hmm. What I eat in the privacy of my own bed 
doesn't affect you guys. <laughs> so who gives a shit? That's why I said that's just as pointless. Like it's all so so stupid. That would be like if I'm like, you know, every time I'm about to have a panic attack, I take like three deep breaths and I, it immediately goes away, which that doesn't work for me. But let's no. just say that yeah. is a hack. And you, I tell you that, right? And yeah. you say that doesn't work for you. And I go, you're not doing it right. You have to double the two and carry the one. And that's what it's <laughs> Have you tried doubling it? <laughs> Maybe if you were better at math. Have you tried doubling it and giving it to the next person? Yeah. <laughs> if you guys were, that's hilarious. Someone should have written that in there. Maybe if you were good at math you wouldn't you wouldn't have those problems yeah like it's just like what it's so dumb and like <laughs> silly and and i feel like and it, i didn't understand why they were getting so mad that's why I, what <laughs> enrages me too is that it's like first of all this is like it, and not to like be like annoying but it's like a patriarchal thing to pit women's bodies against each other and to act like there's a one size fits all for everyone yeah and there's not, it, there's beauty and nuance. There's beauty and difference. It's okay if it doesn't work for someone else, but it works for you. Like that's okay. You know what that means? We're not the same person. So it's all right. Yeah. Like I, I don't fucking care if it works for you. That's what I said. Not Cause that not the knowledge of it working for you doesn't help me. <laughs> like me knowing that now is just as useless as me knowing that it's, oh, it's times two. It's one of those, useless. like, I don't care that something good happened to you. It should have happened to me instead. I wish it worked for me. Yeah. My life would be so much easier. I wish that my body was small enough that I could be like, fuck it. That works for me. Like, and some of them, some of the comments that were really mean were written by thin women. And some of them were written by women that are not thin. Like they're plus size, curvy, and they were being really mean, like, hey, relax. It's not that serious. Yeah, it it's doesn't work for me. Serious. It works for you and I don't care. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong and with that. And just as a side note for people that are like, why do you guys focus on the negative? Dude. First of all, what about me or anything about my platform makes you think I don't focus on the negative? That's yeah. my whole, that's my brand at this point. Mm -hmm. I like literally look for people who talk shit about me. That's me focusing on the negative because it's what's blown my platform up in the first place. The beauty and focus, not even quote, quote, focusing on negative. The beauty in that is that you take the power away from it. Like, yeah, that's the whole point. But also sometimes we're like funny people. We like to make fun of shit, even yeah. if it's, even if it's mean. This next one, this is the last one. This one's from Stacy. Mm -hmm. She said, there was this one time I got in trouble. So my mom and stepdad left me at home and took my siblings on vacation. <laughs> on vacation? Like far or did they just do like a weekend thing? Even then. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's crazy. Did that change change up your attitude or what? Was that your villain origin story? Did that make you straighten up? <laughs> that would make me straighten up. Yeah. Yeah. It would to me too. Yeah. Yeah. One time I got in trouble. It was my fault. My mom had told me we were doing like a photo shoot for something. And my mom had to my me, mom's work. Yeah, we to were to be in a brochure and and f to be literally in ads for the summer to for take the, the bus. bus. Yeah, and my yeah. mom had told we'd gone to my grandma's house, and my mom told me because I'm the oldest. She's like, "Don't forget, you need to, you and your sister need to be ready at this time." Yeah, she was like, like bathed, hair brushed, yeah. like make sure you're ready to go packed up by yeah. this time because I have to pick you up and after she, work. She told me this before she dropped me off. Like, me well, and, and she texted and called Jason to remind her in the morning too. Yeah, and then I said, "Got it. I will be ready." And then I wasn't ready. And she forgot. I forgot because I was having too much fun with my cousins. And then my mom took Drew and left me there. Well, first she left without both of us. Yeah. And then I was like, that's unfair. I didn't know. Yeah. And so then my mom came back and she took me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it really upset me and hurt my feelings. <laughs> Even though that's what I get for being irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom came in and she was like, what are you doing? I told you guys you needed to be ready. And then Dayson was like, well... No, I was like, hold on, I'll be ready in like five minutes. And then it was my fault because I was not, I was irresponsible. And my mom told me what time to be ready. And I left with her. Yeah. Not the same as being left at home from vacation. No, but I did. I was in that ad. I was, the campaign was called Be There, Do That. Yeah, I remember. I was on a poster and a brochure. <laughs> and you got paid $50. I did. And I was the and only brown got, person. And you got a new outfit. I'll never forget that. Well, I actually went in my outfit and then they were like, basically commenting on the outfit. They were like, oh, does she have anything else? And I only brought one, obviously. Yeah. I think I was like, 
10, 11 in that thing. Yeah, you might have been younger. Yeah, that's true. Um, big as shit, though. I was bigger than all the other kids. Mm -hmm. um, and, oh, God, I need to look for those pictures. But I remember you went to do that, and then um, Daddy picked me up from Grandma's house, and I was like, because I cried the whole day. <laughs> I was so sad. It wasn't the whole day. No, but like when you're little, this time, was at this was at the end of the day. Yeah, so I probably Drew was probably gone for like four hours. If, if that, that, yeah. And I was at my grandma's house by myself, like absolutely miserable. Well, my cousins were all there, but I just laid in my cousin's room and cried. <laughs> and then my dad picked me up, and then we went to dinner at Pat and Oscar's. That's true, we did. Yeah, and it was fire. Do you guys remember that restaurant? <laughs> Pat and Oscar, if you're listening to this, please come back. Please come back. <laughs> please resurrect the chain. I will promote it personally. Please explain to the people what Pat and Oscar's is. First of all, it used to be called just Oscar's. Yeah. Then they changed it to Pat and Oscar's. Yeah. And it's basically the menu is very simple. <laughs> Pasta. Like red sauce spaghetti. Red sauce spaghetti. On like, a penne. Like, yeah, on a penne. <laughs> yeah. And no other noodle choice. No other sauce. sauce. Just marinara. Yeah. Uh, pizza, but they had like three or four flavor combos mm -hmm. max. Breadsticks and a Caesar salad. Caesar salad. That's well, it. Well, and then some grilled chicken. Like oh a, yeah, like they had like a chicken. lemon chicken, like a rotisserie too. chicken. Yeah, that's all that's on the menu. <laughs> Sign me up. I didn't like going there, but I I liked the memories, but I didn't like loved to eat there. Pat and I loved Pat and Oscars. <laughs> After every big event, I'm like Pat and Oscars. That's what I would pick. I know I would pick Red Robin. Yep, Fry Freak. Oh sure, now I'm a fry freak. I am no potato freak. I'm gonna eat them in all forms, but fries especially. Okay, <laughs> one more time. That's your favorite food. No, my favorite food is soup. That's true. Fries is second. Okay, <laughs> so far off. Uh, Pat and Oscar, please come back. We miss the, you. Let's get the band back together. <laughs> Resurrect. Make one chain, and What's I. What's your will favorite food? It. Bread. No pasta. I told you. Oh, but those are all your favorite foods. I've had an Oscars. That's why. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's why that's I said. Disgusting. That's why I said. That was my Canes. Like Canes has one thing and one thing only. Yeah. That was my Canes. I don't and care. And they took it from I me. I don't care for Canes. Me what either. kind of restaurant? Tell me. Explain me this. What kind of restaurant sells fries, but not a large fry? Why is nobody talking about this? <laughs> Um, guys, why is no why one is talk nobody talking about? Finally, this? somebody's talking about this. <laughs> why is no one talking about that? You I can't get have, a large fry. I think they have bigger problems. Well, first for of all, example, the only sauce one choice. sauce. Yeah, and then people. And the last time we talked about it with Billy, they said that they do have a honey mustard. Did you know that? No, I did not. And that must be new because <laughs> my very first time going there, I asked for a honey mustard, and they said we don't have honey mustard. No, we only no, have that this. dog named Kane or whatever that's on their thing. He came out and spit on you. That's what I heard happen. <laughs> There's no dog. There's literally a dog. There's no dog. Dude. He's like a golden retriever. He's their mascot, and his name is Kane. You're literally making things. <laughs> I up. swear, my life. You're literally making literally things up. while I'm looking up. Ask Billy to come in here and talk about the no. dog. No, there's literally a dog. Drew. No, there is not. Yeah, call him. I'm not calling Billy. There's literally He's a dog. literally outside. He's in the living room. <laughs> There's a fucking dog right here. I told you. Where have you ever seen that dog in a Raising He's, Cane's? I saw him at the first one we ever went to after work that one time. Yeah, his name is Raising Cane. That's so not real. It's true. That's so Comment not down real. below that you have also seen the look up the, the Raising dog. Cane's logo. Is there a dog in there? No, it's not their logo. I'm exactly. saying he's their mascot. Why the dog Raising Cane's? It's on it's literally on the Raising Cane's website. Why the dog? We came was up with his name's why? No, the the name of this article says why the dog. Oh, like, what why is, the is dog? why is the dog? <laughs> why the dog? That's why I was like, his name's Y. And it says, At, when coming up with the name for his restaurant in 1996, Todd originally planned to call it Sock Eyes. Would you like it more if it was called that? Sock Eyes? No. After the salmon he fished in Alaska. They only serve sock eyes. salmon. Luckily, a friend suggested he named it after his yellow Labrador retriever, Raising Cane, who was always with Todd at the construction site. His name is Raising Cane? <laughs> That's so dumb. I told you. That's not real. That's a made up Eat story. Shit. That's I a told you. Story. No, that's a made up story for uh for the guy who created it. Yeah. You know, you like create different lore behind it to make it more interesting. <laughs> like that. And then Raising Kane, he's the one that that told him 
to only do one sauce. Wouldn't it make more sense for his name to be Kane? And then like, you're like raising Kane. That's what I thought his name was Kane. There's no way his name is raising Kane. There's no way. There's no <laughs> fucking way. You're a raising sit. Yeah. No, it's like raising, raising Kane. Come here. <laughs> raising Kane. Sit. Raising Kane. <laughs> off the couch. There's no way. There's no way. That's not real. That's not real. I'm glad I was, um, I was validated in what I said. I don't even remember what we were talking about. Oh, the modeling gig. Yeah. I was the only um, brown person in that group. That was my first brush with Photoshop. I did not know they did that. Okay. In in ads. Um, what did they Photoshop on you? Well, first off, when they were originally shooting us, they were like, this is like really fucked up. And my mom did not know this until after because I told her after the fact. But they like kept calling me the ethnic one. <laughs> <laughs> so like they kept putting me in the front. Like they kept putting me in the middle. They're like, oh, this is like I was like a POC representation like, representation yeah. for all people of color like and there there the only other minority there was um there was another boy there and he was asian but everybody else was white but everybody else was white so like they kept putting me they kept saying well this one looks more ethnic they were talking like i couldn't hear them or speak english which i don't <laughs> know if they knew that and so they like kept putting me in the center and then they would shoot us in such weird spots so then when i saw the the ad after the fact they photoshopped a lot of us into different spots than where we were mm -hmm. but they like they photoshopped first of all they face tuned the fuck out of my face like they smooth they used that blur tool on me heavy <laughs> and i still looked like me but i just knew my skin did not look like that and they they almost like highlighted me a little bit mm -hmm. in the background and then they put a white kid in the front and center. They were that was like their favorite kid with the with the blonde hair. No, not even him. The it, ginger had, kid. Right? He, no, he had brown like mohawk. Oh, kid. I thought it was red. Sorry. And then he had a red shirt on. That's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. And then they photoshopped him into the center, even though they were shooting me in the center almost the entire time. And then they photoshopped in the center, but they fucked up the Photoshop so one of his arms is missing, which is weird. Like it's he, he just looks like lopsided because uh, they did a poor job. And then they took pictures of my back and they wanted me to hold the boogie board oh, yeah. and look at the ocean. And my hair was super long at the time. It went past my butt at the time. So they wanted the wind blowing and they wanted to like take pics of me. And um, they took a bunch mm -hmm. of me. I told you they took pictures of me that entire fucking time. Like because I I actually looked like I went to the beach and that's literally just because I'm brown. That's what they kept saying. So then. Uh, after the fact, they photoshopped my back and my arms and my hair to look like that white girl. Yeah. So they gave her blonde hair, gave me blonde hair, white skin, and they put a pink shirt on her. Mm -hmm. She had a pink shirt and I had a yellow shirt on. And I remember telling our mom, I'm like, that's literally me. What the fuck? They made me white. Like, why did they turn me into that other girl? And in the other pictures of that girl, her hair is really short. She has like a little short blonde bob. Mm. I was like, what the fuck? Basically the... I don't think it was the shoot people necessarily, but the people after were extremely racist, like super. I'm sure. And they were like, it's mm, a little too ethnic. So they were like switching it up. Mm. They put me in a rash guard and had me take pics in between a surfboard. Just. And I stayed home. <laughs> and I got paid $50. Learned my lesson. I know. And I got I paid $50 and in microaggressions. <laughs> That's what I took. And then I think Drew spent it on like a video game we could play together or something. I did. Like the very next day. I had no concept of saving money. I was like, I'm going to spend this immediately. <laughs> Let's go ahead and cash that. I'm going to go ahead and write that and make it out to cash. All right, y'all. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Two Idiot Girls. Yes. Please be sure to keep an eye out for um, another Google forum poll that will be the topic for our next episode. If you yes. do have an idea for a funny episode, please send it to us. Oh, yeah. Or comment on the video. Yeah. A lot of people know. did tell us to do a confessions episode, but. Honestly, I feel like that is what we're doing when you guys are talking. I don't want to aid and abet you. You know what I mean? <laughs> I feel like you already confess a lot of things to me. I don't so. want to go down as an accomplice. <laughs> <laughs> so please be sure to look out for that on our Instagram. They're in the story highlights. A lot of people are like, where do I find these? In the story highlights. The link is in one of the stories. You'll see it. Okay? Yes. But other than that, if you do like this episode, you can stream other um, audio versions of our episode anywhere you can find a podcast. And the video version is always on our YouTube channel. We hope you have a great week and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.